Hello, avid readers of Christian fiction. Trisha Goyer here, and I am so excited to have Jody Headland with me today. So, welcome, Jody. Thank you for having me. Welcome, everyone. It's, it's so great you being here. Now, I was looking because the last time I interviewed you was on my blog in 2012. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, <laughs> I was like. We have 10 years of catching up to do yeah. um, since that time. I know there's a, a more recent blog post that we'll have, have up this week. But before mm -hmm. that, 2012, mm -hmm. you were homeschooling, mom, five kids at home. So just tell us, like, where your life is now. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, I still do have five kids. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I'm gaining one this summer. My One of my daughters is getting married, so. I feel like I'm gaining another child into the yes, family. Awesome. Child. Yes, I know. Um, so yes, I I have homeschooled for many many years. Um, my my oldest four are now graduated from high school, and I have my oldest three actually graduated from college. Oh, so awesome! So I I feel like I'm sort of on the tail, and now I have one who's still in high school. She just uh, finished her junior year of high school. And so she is going to be um, starting her senior year next year and kind of dual enrolled in college classes. So awesome. the pressure of homeschooling is kind of off now. Yeah. It has been for a while. And so I really do feel like I'm mostly empty nested and, uh, in some ways, uh, I am. In some ways, I'm not. One of my sons is still living at home and doing college from home. And then I have my my future son-in-law has been living with us for a few months until they get married. So it's still a very busy place. Yeah. A lot of coming and going and kind of chaotic at times. But um, I really do feel like I can work full time now. So um, I am um, very grateful for that. I love that. Well, we have a hello. Mm -hmm. Emily Hi. said hello. So hello there, Emily. Um, and th so I still have my youngest is 11. So I'm still my oldest is 30. Oh, wow. Three. I've been homeschooling a while. I'm still homeschooling right yeah. in the middle of it. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's such a blessing for us to be able to homeschool and write. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be talking about yeah. your newest book, um, mm -hmm. which I have right here Yay. To Tame a Cowboy. Mm -hmm. um, so what number is this? of your books? Well, that is the third book in my cowboy series. So, okay. you know, I kind of ventured into a little bit of the Western thing. Mm -hmm. um, I've been kind of all over the place. I, I, I consider myself to be primarily a historical romance yeah. author. But underneath that umbrella, I have branched off and tried, kind of dabbled in some different things. And so this was sort of a kind of a venture into the old west if you want yes. to say and so it wasn't that I wanted to switch genres and become the newest Karen Wittemeyer or <laughs> yeah. Keneally or anything like that they've got the, the western genre well covered but I just felt like it was um just kind of a fun setting uh to, to try and tackle. So it is the third book among five and the fourth book releases in October Oh, good. Okay. And then, yep. And the fifth book releases next spring. I think it's February. So not too long. <laughs> and then I'll That's be done awesome. With yeah. And so mm -hmm. is it following the same family all the way through? Is yes. Right. Yeah. The story centers around five <coughs> oh, children me. from the McQuaid family. And book one was the oldest and book two was the, the next one. And this family sort of migrating to Colorado and starting a home there. And so now in book three is sort of the, I guess he's the middle child. Yeah. And he is wounded mm -hmm. uh, physically and emotionally from the Civil <laughs> War. And so he's now in the West with his family and survive has survived all of that, but somewhat the war kind of destroyed his soul. And so yeah. the whole story is about his coming to understand himself and the hurt and the pain that he experienced and then to work through and find healing. Yeah. So yeah, so it's a third, the third story. And then 
The fourth story is actually about the youngest child, and and that's the the main girl who Ivy. Yeah, <laughs> Ivy. <laughs> she's a little spitfire. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah. She is. She's been really fun to write. So her story um, comes next, and she finds her true love. And then um, the very last story is about the prodigal son mm. who. Um, as you'll find out at the end of the third book has to leave kind of on the run from Colorado and has a lot of um, baggage. And so he, um, it, yeah, it, it, his was a very, very emotionally, uh, it just a really powerful story to write. Um, I always love that prodigal son redemption story. Um, it hits home. So yeah. Yeah, his so in book be... three, he's still acting like a bad boy. So yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> so he still does that in book four too. <laughs> yeah, but um, but yeah, yeah, it'll be. I hope readers will enjoy seeing all of these stories unfold. And so yeah, yeah. What I love about it is the definitely. I mean, we're definitely in the old west and all the cowboy things, but historically you tell you're a historical fiction writer because the civil war, I mean, just emotions. And we think about like, mm -hmm. now we know it's PTSD and all these things. Mm -hmm. Well, like this is in the 1860s. Like they did not yeah. understand those things and understand what was going on. And um, they knew yeah. he was wounded, but he wasn't talking about what was going on. Finally, mm -hmm. I don't want to give too much away, but through the course of the book, he starts opening up more. And so I think mm -hmm. it just made me realize like the same stuff we see people struggling with today, that mm -hmm. was happening with all those soldiers on both sides of the conflict right. and just all the pain. And um, plus she's from the South, she's mm -hmm. Southern. So there's a, that yeah. little that little twist. Okay, so right. um, also Savannah is a veterinarian, which was super fun. So mm -hmm. talk about just your research with the Civil War, the balance of yeah. North and South after the war, because it's mm -hmm. not like everything's better. And right. you know, there's so much brokenness in people and in finances and all the things. Mm -hmm. And then you have this female who's trying to make something of herself, become a veterinarian. She loves it. She does it well, which I'm like, wow, that's mm -hmm. birthing the horses. I was like, this is some really serious stuff here. Yeah. <laughs> um, so talk about the research that went into uh, it, okay. as you're working on this book. Yeah, sure. The, the research is, uh, you know, the Civil War stuff was definitely, like you said, there's a lot that we've learned since that time about the emotional distress mm -hmm. and PTSD and all of the different things that um, we can now label that at the time they really, they really didn't know. And so going back and trying to <clears throat> understand that from the perspective of 1867 mm -hmm. was really difficult, you know, because you, you couldn't research PTSD <laughs> because right. that wasn't a term at the time. Um, <clears throat> so just really even looking at like what kinds of medicines were used to help treat that and treat wounds, it's just really complicated to find the exact thing that was being talked about yeah. at that time and not to put the modern word on it. Yes. And so as a historical writer, you have to be very careful about how you label things and portray things. And um, fortunately my editors are really good about saying, hey, that's too modern sounding, you know, but trying to find that balance so readers also understand, you know, what you're trying to portray that um, is going on as well. So yeah, the, that whole aspect was really fun to research as far as the veterinarian aspect. Um, at the time I started writing, I think um, I was really into the PBS series, All Creatures Great and Small, oh. by James, the James Harriet story. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think that had just come on. So um, I went ahead and I ordered um, his book and read through that and was just like, oh my goodness, this is such good information. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, even though he actually practiced as a veterinarian in the 1930s mm -hmm. and maybe 40s. Uh, well, I think the show portrays it like right before the war, the World War yeah. II. But uh, 
the stuff is very still, it, it, the methods that he used were still very much uh, the kinds of methods that have been in practice for, for many years. So they didn't have the modern medicine so much that, that we have, obviously. Um, they had advanced some, they had more than they had in the, the 1860s by right, that point, but right. it was still a lot of the same type of, of things were done and used. And in fact, um, as I was researching and writing, I realized that they, she, my original scene when she's birthing the horse, um, I had her giving the, the um, colt or the, the, the newborn CPR. Yeah. And my editor was said, no, they didn't. And she, she checked fact me on that and said, no, they didn't know how to, they had, that hadn't, wasn't a thing at that time. So you <laughs> they just were breathing. Yeah, yeah. They weren't doing the other part. Right. Yeah. Right. So I had to change that up. And so you do, and even though, you know, there's just a lot of little facts like that, that you have to, um, you just, you know, you hope you get right, I guess. And <laughs> we're so have thankful editor. for editors. Yeah, the editors, yeah. when they check those things, it's like sometimes mm -hmm. like, oh, we're so used like to these terms or these methods no. that we use now. Yeah. And it's like, oh, wait, you're right. They probably wouldn't know to mm -hmm. do that. Although, I mean, reading some of it, because I get swept away. Some of my favorite Instagram people to follow are farmers. And you see yeah. like birthing calves or birthing horses and like some of the same mm -hmm. stuff. They're sticking their yeah. hands up. Like, oh, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, like, so, like you said, some of that stuff is just timeless. You know, the way that they always did it, it's just the way they continue to do it and, and it worked and it still works. And so they, they obviously, we have so many more uh, ways to help animals now with our modern medicine, but it, it, there's just so many things that, you know, sticking your arm up. Yep. <laughs> uh, they're, they're, they're that's just the way they do that's, so. that's how they help them out <laughs> yeah oh wow it was so it's right. so like when you're I, and i love books where i mean you you're caught up in the story and definitely the romance and there's like whoa that was kind of steamy though <laughs> that little interaction yeah. was steamy but then <laughs> it's like i love like i feel like i'm learning stuff and i'm like mm -hmm. i don't know that's the fun part of historical that, that those yeah. things are it's very true to life it doesn't feel like you just kind of set people in the old west and whatever but all those things are true to life about the type of careers or the type of experiences they would have mm -hmm. um so i really really enjoy that yeah yeah that's one of the fa my favorite things about historic writing historicals is trying to weave in mm -hmm. those subtle details that are so that the, the reader doesn't even really realize you're weaving those things in you know that's right, kind right. of the fun of the of writing it is trying to make it so seamless and so just oh just adding them in mm -hmm. as if as if they the reader already knows them but um giving them those details and and helping them kind of bring that whole era to life is is really fun so. that's great Okay, mm -hmm. so my question is, and next question, did you already know the characters that would be in book three when like you started book one? Um, did you already have like Savannah in your mind? And of course Brody's gonna be there, but did you yeah. have that all planned out? Well, I am typically a, uh, I'm not a huge plotter when it comes to my books. I generally have just a very brief, like synopsis mm -hmm. that I have to turn in to my publisher. And so that yeah. kind of is my backbone of my story. But, but when I started the series, what I, what I did is <clears throat> I had to write a book proposal for Bethany house and they asked kind of a, to flesh out a, like just a paragraph. Yeah. Per book, yeah. Right. And the first book, obviously they wanted more depth. Um, they wanted to see more of the plot and that sort of thing. So I had to really write out a long synopsis for book one, but then for books two, three, four, and five, I just, uh, I brainstormed the whole series and I was like, okay, so we're going to have five, you know, this family of five, and we're going to try to figure out what each of the brother's interests are mm, and yeah. sort of their, their personalities. And then 
can I figure out some really unique kind of fun roles for the women in their mm-hmm. lives that, you know, that I haven't done yet with other books or that, that I just found would be really interesting for that particular time. So kind of figuring out what do they want to do? What does this heroine want to <laughs> do? And then pairing them. Yeah. And, um, Besides sort of the bare bones of their occupations and a general idea of who the characters might become, I I didn't have much more than that at that point. So I I just um, sort of knew, okay, Brody was going to be this horse trainer, Savannah was going to be a veterinarian. Those two things really mesh, you know, that kind of thing. Um, And he's going to be broken and she's going to be the healer. That really meshes them together. And so I kind of have done that sort of thing with, uh, you know, as I, as I laid out the whole series, but obviously then once you get through book one, then book all the characters start to take on more life. And so then it becomes a little easier to figure out, okay, I want my character, Brody's this way. And, you know, and then it adds more, you can, you can kind of jump off of that a little more and, and develop him even more at that point. So, and then as book two is done, you have even more and yeah. so it's kind of, and you have the story set up the way you want it. You kind of have a better idea of, okay, how is this all going to fit in with books two and one and two? And so, yeah, I, I feel like for me, that again it comes back to having the bare bones but then mm-hmm. allowing it all to develop kind of or- organically as as i write yeah i love that yeah. yeah and i love that and even you can see brody developing in this story where at first you just think he's a super tough cowboy he's just gonna mm-hmm. throw punches when and whenever he has a chance and then as the book along, goes along you see he's actually a really tender soul Mm-hmm. And he's kind of doing that. He's kind of like fighting the memories. I don't want to give too much. Yeah. He's fighting the memories and that's yeah. just caused him to have this tough exterior. But then right. I love how Savannah is the one that's able to get him to open up. Yeah. And it's just yeah. so good. Yeah. Right. And, and what was surprising with him is that, and something I didn't know until I actually started writing the story was that I was going to make him to be an artist. Yeah. And I didn't know that until I started writing the story. And then I was like, yeah, I mean, sometimes it's the quieter, more sensitive Mm -hmm. personalities that tend to be a little more creative. And so he really fit that role well Mm -hmm. uh, for that being so sensitive that everything bothered him more. He was just kind of a more passionate guy, kind of more inwardly focused. And sometimes artists tend to be that way. And so yeah. it, it, it fared him well, but I didn't realize that I was going to give that to him or that he was going <laughs> to tell me that's what he wanted. Exactly. He just showed up as like, you like, yeah. he pulls out the sketchbook and you're like, what are you doing? Brody, I am like, what are you doing with oh, that sketchbook? I know. I didn't <laughs> you know. <laughs> you've been carrying it around. What's in yeah. that? What else is in your sketchbook? <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> oh, so fun. Okay. I love mm-hmm. all this. It's so much fun. Um, definitely got to find out what's going to happen with the other siblings. Um, mm-hmm. So to tame a cowboy, but I know you have written a lot of other things and maybe people are just hearing about you for the first time. So you just want to share maybe some of the other um, series sure. or genres or whatever, go whatever direction you want, but just share some of the okay. other books. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like I mentioned, I, I, my main umbrella is that I'm a historical romance mm-hmm. writer, but underneath that I have branched off and, and done some other things. So, um, y- you know, for those who just like straight up historical romance, I have some other really great series that are, are previously published. I have an orphan train series. Mm-hmm. as well as a bride ship series. So we kind of were going with the, the whole ship train thing there. <laughs> <laughs> Transportation. Yeah. yeah. Well, who knows what's coming next. Um, but then, uh, so I have those series. And then uh, I also have done a few, a couple of biofiction based on true people. Mm-hmm. So I have like um, a, a book on Martin Luther and his wife and a book on John Newton and his wife. Those are both historical figures that were pillars of the Christian faith. And and so I did some of that. I also uh, just recently branched off and did a couple of time travel. (laughs) And I know you had um, 
Gabriel Meyer last yes. week, I think, uh, yes. talking about her time travel. So, so fun. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I have a series that I am writing. Uh, the first two books have already released. And so if you're interested in time travel, I invite you to check that out as well. And those are, um, mine. mine's a little bit different in that my heroine actually goes back into the past mm. and um you know that it's it's not like a split time it's actually she travels back into she's the past. really traveling so did we have the she truly we have is. trains and ships and she's yeah. really traveling <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah there's a whole other level of travel going on in my books um yeah so the the time travel is um i, I won't give too much away but it happens via ancient holy water and they go back to medieval times. So it's a little mm -hmm. bit of a different time period as well. And so that, um, that has been really fun to write. I've written two books in that. And I'm, all, and so a third one is, is with the, the editor and the fourth one is I'm working on right now. So readers have two more, at least in that series to look forward to. And then um, I also under my historical romance umbrella have been writing young adult fiction for quite a few years. My first series was published with Zondervan. And again, it's sort of that medieval knights mm -hmm. and castles and kind of a fun um, setting there. And so I've just continued that, uh, that setting and sort of that fairy tale-ish knights and, you know, princesses and, you know, that whole thing. Yeah. And I have quite a number of different series in that as well that are not just geared toward young adults but also my adult readers love them too so uh i, I love actually, that yeah i actually have a series that i'm working on right now and the first two books released last fall and the third and the fourth books in that series are releasing in just this summer so in june one and july the other and um, readers, my early readers are just starting to, to read the book. They just got it. <laughs> so oh, they're, I'm starting to get some reviews on that. And it's exciting to see their enthusiasm for the series continuing. So, yeah, so that Lots a lot, of fun. A lot yeah. to from. <laughs> So basically, if you're just learning about Jody, you're going to have lots of books to, to read for a very long mm -hmm. time. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So going back yeah. to, to Tame a Cowboy, what, was there anything that surprised you about that was maybe um, unexpected or different that you didn't expect in the Wild West or dealing with like cowboy books or any mm -hmm. of that? Yeah, I, well, I actually lived in the West while I was growing up for a few years. Mm -hmm. I um, when I was a child. And then I also, and I lived in Colorado actually in North Park. So this is in South Park. And those who know Colorado kind of know there's a North, Middle and South Park kind of up in the high country. And so I, I was familiar with Colorado and I really loved it. And then my husband and I lived there for a couple of years while he was in grad school. We lived in Denver. Okay. And so we kind of got our you know, our bill <laughs> of hiking and all of that good stuff. And, and so I, Colorado's always had a really special mm -hmm. place in my heart. And so when I started to research this series and, and I decided I was going to set it in South Park, what was really the most surprising thing was, as I was doing research, was realizing just that I didn't realize that the wild horses had been a part of Colorado. I didn't realize... All the ranching yeah. there had been such a big part of their history. So it was really fun to sort of incorporate all of that, and which was part of the reason why I set that in the more uh, cattle ranching area of South Park, which has all of the field, you know, all of yeah. the large open range there. So, yeah, I, I think it was just really, um, I had been, in different parts of Colorado, but never really realized what a rich history there was, especially even with mining and all of the little towns surrounding that area. And even on um, the setting of Fair Play where that was a, a mining town as well. So yeah. And then yeah. The, 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 there's a Native American. Yeah. Element to right. it. I mean, there's yeah. all that going on. 
-hmm. And then, I mean, and I think we think of, especially like the Civil War is only going to be like in the Southern states or like over on the East Coast, like those sorts of things. But so much of the Civil War impacted what was happening in the whole country. Mm -hmm. And like as people were leaving and, um, you know, so much has changed um, in their lives. And so I think Mm -hmm. it was a neat thing. It was neat for me to see that this time period um, there was still a lot of struggle, even though it was post Civil War, with right. all that going on, even in Colorado. And there's the Native mm-hmm. American again. We 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 dealt with the slave issue, um, supposedly, mm-hmm. <laughs> but mm-hmm. now we have the Native American stuff is still yeah. going on. And so again, I love those books that just weave in history mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. you're just caught up in the story. And oh my goodness, are they going to get together? And then yeah. you're learning so much in the process. Right. Yeah. The, the, the native aspect, I will just say that there probably was more actually going on at the time, but um, it's just something that we as authors are sort of encouraged not to Mm. tackle too much, especially since, you know, we're not people or I'm not a person of color. So it's hard for me to truly to just, play them as accurately yeah. as someone else could. So I know I, I, I feel like I could touch on touch on it more, but it's it's really a sensitive topic nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. And so unfortunately, I probably don't give it as much justice as I could in, yeah. my, in the stories. Because but, but then but then we could say, okay, we could take the book and then we could research and learn. From exactly. Ourselves. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very true. Very yeah. true. All right, Kristen mm-hmm. asked, um, do you have a favorite series to write in or even a favorite time period? Wow. Well, that the fun thing about jumping around so much is that if I get tired of one period, exactly. well, then I know the next book is going to be something different. <laughs> yeah, so I, I honestly, I feel like it's kept things fresh for mm-hmm. me to have the variety that I do and um, – so I, I really have loved this Colorado series and I hope that I can squeeze in some time to write a, a, another series that branches off of this one. I'm, I'm, I have ideas for it. I have ideas for three books, but the problem is not having enough time to write all these it's books. It's so true. <laughs> yeah. People always say like, so, how do you come up with all your ideas? I'm like, the ideas are not the problem. The time yeah. is the problem. We have kids. We have stuff know, going on. We I have know. life, and yeah. yeah, and actually yeah. sitting down and getting the words on the paper. So I love exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. It reminds me so much of me, just like, oh, I can do this. I'm gonna write about yeah. this. It's yeah. so fun. Oh, I love <laughs> I it. I know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's it's hard. You, you uh, even though I work full time. I am available to my kids mm-hmm. and I try and keep a flexible schedule. If anyone needs me, I'm there. And I love that aspect of being a stay at home mom who works from home, but you know, it, it is challenging. And, and even, even though I can work evenings or weekends or whatever, it's, you still only have so many hours in the day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. All right. So mm-hmm. one question I love to end with, is um, what are some Christian fiction books that you have enjoyed? It could be last year, it could be five years from now, or five years ago. Just what are okay. some ones that you've enjoyed? Okay. Well, I I can say that um, I just finished listening to Melissa Ferguson's, Melissa Ferguson's Meet Me in the Margin. Oh, I, I, got I think that. I got that right. Yeah, I bought it on Audible and I have not listened to it yet. In fact, I listened mm-hmm. to yours on Audible, so I'm enjoying okay. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, I did. I just listened to M- Melissa's. Uh, finished it yesterday, as a matter of fact. And so I'm really into rom coms. I what I tend to do is I tend to read everything that I don't write. Yeah. So yeah. I it's hard for me to read what I write. So I, I've been gravitating toward rom-coms and I loved hers. I like literally laughed out loud. Oh, <laughs> so so fun. Yeah, I need to send her a note and tell her thanks for the, the reading experience. Um, I also really enjoy, I'm also reading, physically reading Becky Wade's newest book. Uh, I can't remember the title of it, but it just released. And um, I, I'm a huge Becky Wade fan. I also love Denise Hunter's. So I have, 
all of both of those authors, I, I literally have everything. And I just downloaded Bethany Turner, one of Bethany Turner's books. So I read a awesome. lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the fun <laughs> of it is just, and I'm like you too, I read lots of different things. Um, mm -hmm. So it's so fun to just get swept away in a story and they're like, oh, wait, yeah. I need to write for a while now. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I got to finish this book. I know, I know. Well, those are some yeah. good ones. So if you're watching, make a list. Um, those are some great ones. I do have Melissa's that I've already bought. It's waiting for me on my mm -hmm. audio book. So yeah. I'm glad you liked it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So Jody, for those who would love to hear more of all about all your books and would love to connect with you, where can they go online to do that? Well, the best place is my Facebook reader room, actually. I invite anyone who wants to to come over and join me there. It's just Jody Hudland, Hudland's reader room. If you type that in, okay. hopefully the search the search will come up with that. And that's where I tend to engage with readers, answer questions. Um, we have early reading opportunities posted there, sign ups for that, as well as giveaways. So it's a really great place to connect. Awesome. All okay. right. Well, thank yeah. you so much for being here. It's been great yeah. talking to you. Thank you.